Coming up, the Prime Minister and the IDB with a major agreement. What does it mean for the country? Also, IDB meetings start tomorrow. ZNS News, the only station live tonight. And then, find out if Loretta Butler-Turner will go after a leadership position in the free national movement. Also, it always is, sir. Get ready for Junkin' New Carnival. Find out who you're going to be partying with. And then, what are the experts saying about Buddy Heal? Cross to me between Dwayne Wade and James Harden. ZNS Total Sports, the only station on the Buddy Heal journey at the Final Four. The Bahamas Tonight, the National Report, starts now. Now in HD. presents The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC Every Day. The Bahamas pulling off the successful launch of a major international conference at the new Bahamar Convention Center, which could be the preview to some good news at the stalled project. Good evening, everyone. I'm Keishla Adderley. And I'm Charisma Robinson. As preliminary meetings took place ahead of the start of the Inter-American Development Bank Conference today, the nation's leader addressed the Bahamar issue and announced a possible intervention that could be in the making. Clint Watson reports. As delegates arrive for the global conference put on by the Inter-American Development Bank at the Bahama Convention Center this week, the government will be waiting with anticipation as some of the players that will attend have major interest in advancing the stalled $3.5 billion resort. We have been advised of some very, very significant personalities coming from China with whom um, we are arranging to have bilateral meetings with, with respect to bring this in, very high-ranking persons coming in. Um, I'm from Ch China. Um, to this conference and who <clears throat> will be the subject of interest on our part so as f to again advance the feeling and the thoughts of the government of the Bahamas and the people of the Bahamas that this is a facility that should be opened and meaning construction should resume to finish the rest of it um, as they move to identify um, the new leadership, new ownership um, on the premises. The Prime Minister says they were advised by the President of the IDB that the Bahamas should spare no effort in ensuring the hotel is opened and filled. He says the IDB conference helps to demonstrate the enormous potential of the resort to attract the world and they must get past the present stage to make it happen. Actually standing in the convention facilities of Bahama um, that you can see the extraordinary beauty of it. Um, of it. Um, we are reminded of, of the vision of, of Sarkis's million uh, on this occasion, as he shared with me when we stood in the, in the wild environment before this was ever e existing, um, we see the merit of it. We are even more encouraged to know, as we heard from the president of the bank, how could something so beautiful that is 98% finished be so incomplete in its impact on the country. Prime Minister Christie is pleased that his government was able to pull off hosting the Inter-American Development Bank's annual business meeting and conferences, despite the major blow the country was dealt after Bahama went into receivership with its nearly completed resort. And I'm so happy to see that we have made the right arrangements and we are going to be able to expose these delegates um, to the culture of our country in a meaningful way. As you look, you see the art pieces. There'll be more out there for them. Um, to see, but every effort will be made um, to be able to get them who come to this island to feel a part of the Bahamas and to know how this is a place that they should come back to. And as alluded to before by Prime Minister Christie, there are expected to be a number of heavy hitters and big players attending this conference, a number of bilateral meetings as well, discussing issues of mutual importance, particularly for the Bahamas. Clint Watson, ZNS Network News. Despite the country's debt-to-GDP ratio hovering around 60 to 70 percent, according to the latest International Monetary Fund report, Inter-American Development Bank country representative Maria Florencia Atedemo Hurt says it's not a major concern for the organization. IDB President Luis Alberto Moreno shared during a press conference today that the country has a total loan portfolio of $253 million with the bank. Atedemo Hurt says compared with other Caribbean 
European countries, the Bahamas is not at the high end. She says the IDB considers factors like the quality of debt. We do a more comprehensive analysis and look at the composition of the debt, look at the use of process of the debt, look at the trajectory of the debt, and also any other fiscal measures that are being put out there by a government to strengthen its fiscal position, both revenue and debt. We feel comfortable ab about having a very strong dialogue with government about all pieces of the economy, including that one, and about supporting country in terms of what else can be done to strengthen the fiscal situation. Yeah. Well, as we heard, working sessions started today down at the Bahamar Convention Center. And that's where we find our Altavis Munnings tonight, who gives us a look at what to expect in the days ahead. Well, we seem to be having an audio difficulty there from the bomb, our convention center. We'll get back to Altavis later on in the newscast. But continuing with the national report, the recent exposure, the Panama Papers reportedly uncovered a major plot of tax evasion in various countries. And it's put the Bahamas again under the microscope for its financial services sector. The papers list the Bahamas as number three in the world for money laundering and as a haven for tax evasion. Today, Prime Minister, the Right Honorable Perry Christie, addressed the issue to foreign and local media. Clint Watson has more. Prime Minister the Right Honorable Perry Christie says the country has done the right things to remain compliant as it relates to money laundering and tax evasion by offshore companies. This has concerned mounts over the possible international blacklisting after the Bahamas figured prominently in the recently released Panama Papers. Speaking to foreign and local media at the IDB conference Thursday, Mr. Christie was confident the Bahamas will be vindicated. In everything you do, the truth will come out. And so one can't deny the truth. It is just a, always a challenge when people leak things. It's a challenge to countries um, that have laws and when the laws are breached. Now, with respect to the truth, the truth is the most important thing going forward. And countries have to find a way to be able to be com comfortable with their relations with other countries. The Prime Minister reiterated his government's work to ensure the financial services sector is a well-regulated one in keeping with world standards. We feel that what we have established here, that we have been in compliance, we are still in compliance, and we have a jurisdiction that is an honest, trustworthy jurisdiction. But we stress that it's a jurisdiction where we offer facilities to people that are lawful and permissible. You asked us about anti-money laundering, we have passed the strongest legislation. When you ask us about anti-terrorism legislation, we have passed the strongest legislation. When you ask us to be accountable, we have demonstrated we have a transparent and accountable jurisdiction. All of these things we do, and many times we have to sit and watch jurisdictions that are imposing these standards on us. They don't have the same strict adherence to these things that they're asking us to have. Mr. Grissy touted that the Bahamas seeks new and innovative ways to grow the sector, which includes broadening its market. So we've gone into Latin America, we've gone into Mexico, we've gone into Brazil um, with, with programs and new products, we think, um, that will offer them a facility in our country that is above board and one that does not hide things away from people. And so we, we, we feel that even though there is this notion out there um, that countries like the Bahamas are used to hide money, we have the opportunity to have relations with countries, one-on-one -on -one or bilateral arrangements. Um, we have to make decisions as to whether we take a multilateral approach or a bilateral approach to this, and the country is making all of the decisions. Clint Watson, ZNS Network News. And now this, this afternoon, the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas received a notice of injunction filed by the law firm of Harry B. Sands, Lebowski and Company on behalf of the Coalition to Protect Clifton Bay, Zach Bacon and Fred Smith QC that seeks to prohibit the sale and or publication of documents belonging to or relating to Zach Bacon, Frederick Smith QC and the environmental organization known as Save the Bays and or its directors. While 
filed the injunction notice does not specifically name a respondent, we understand that several media outlets may have received similar notices seeking the curtail reporting on the Save the Bay's murder for hire saga that has gripped the attention of the national news for the past several weeks. As a member of the Fourth Estate, the Broadcasting Corporation and its new operation take any action that seeks to inhibit or frustrate our frustrate our efforts to deliver the news seriously. While it is our duty to abide by the rule of law, we retain our right to work vigorously at delivering the news in a manner consistent with internationally recognized standards of journalism without fear or intimidation. Fox Hill MP Fred Mitchell has written House Speaker Dr. Kendall Major addressing what he calls breaches of the privileges of members of Parliament over the feud with members of Save the Bays. In the letter dated April 7th, Mr. Mitchell states that Attorney Fred Smith reportedly threatened Tall Pines MP Leslie Miller with contempt proceedings if he provides further information regarding Save the Bays. All of this is in response to an injunction obtained by Attorney Fred Smith seeking to restrain any and everyone from repeating information with regards to emails linked to Save the Bays, Save the Bays, pardon me. Additionally, letters issued by the law firm Harry B. Sands and Company asked MPs to say from which source they received emails linked to Save the Bays. Now Mitchell's letter also notes the data commissioner's statement advising members of Parliament to be careful about what they're saying with regard to allegations of unauthorized access to emails related to Save the Bays. On that score, Minister Mitchell notes that the data commissioner admitted she has no jurisdiction in the matter, yet proceeded to warn MPs about their conduct. Now, Mitchell says he will indicate to recipients of the injunction that he considers attempts to serve the injunction's unlawful interference in his right and privilege as a member of parliament and will so report the matter to police if any attempt is made to serve an injunction on him. This matter is already before the House Committee on Privilege. Late last week, the Free National Movement announced that it will hold its national convention in November. Long Island's Member of Parliament Loretta Butler Turner ran for leadership of the party during its last convention and lost to leader Dr. Hubert Menes. When asked if she plans to throw her name in the hat for leadership this time around, this was her response. I can't say no intention. I have no idea of that at this time. Um, I think my priorities should be on my constituents and on national issues as it relates to many of the um, hot topic items that I feel the government is not addressing and that's where I'm going to be placing my emphasis. At this time I have no intent to offer for anything. Um, obviously I think both political parties are going to convention um, but who knows at the end of the day uh, we do have an election to fight and my focus is primarily on Long Island at this time.